It's the Milky Way as you've never seen it before. Two and a half billion infrared pixels are exposing our own galaxy in this new image from NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope. Science is all about getting the big picture, but some pictures are definitely bigger than others. You may have used your computer to make a large panorama yourself by stitching together a few shots from your camera. Depending on the camera, the final picture may contain 10 or 20 million pixels. Now, can you imagine taking over 800,000 pictures and combining them into a single two and a half billion pixel image? Two teams of astronomers have not only imagined it, they've used NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope to make one. And it's online for everyone to explore. Over 50 astronomers have worked on this massive project since the Spitzer mission began. This image combines data from two different legacy projects, known as GLIMPS, headed up by Dr. Ed Churchwell, and MIPSCAL, led by Dr. Sean Carey. The picture covers an area of sky about as wide as your finger, held out at arm's length, and as long as your open arms. Though it sounds like a pretty small slice of the sky, it actually captures half of our entire galaxy. Our sun sits a ways out from the galactic center, so a 130 degree arc takes in most of its area. So our Milky Way is actually very thin compared to its diameter, a lot like a CD. So even a two degree wide scan is going to include most of its disk. The rest of the stars that fill our sky are actually very, very close to us, filling just a tiny fraction of the disk right around our sun. A space image this big takes a lot of space to show off. Spitzer unveiled this giant banner, four feet tall and 180 feet long, at the 2008 summer meeting of the American Astronomical Society in St. Louis. Since then, it's been on display at the Adler Planetarium in Chicago and at the Griffith Observatory in Los Angeles. The glimpse part of the survey includes the shorter infrared wavelengths. At 3.6 and 4.5 microns, we see blue stars that, in visible light, are completely hidden by dust. Carbon-based dust molecules show up at 8 microns, represented as green. MIPSCAL contributes the 24 micron component, rendered as red. This is the warm thermal glow from dust clouds heated by nearby stars. Together, these observations give us a pretty complete view of stellar evolution, beginning to end, across our galaxy. These ubiquitous dark filaments are dust clouds, so dense they're opaque even in the infrared. They're dense enough to trigger gravitational collapse and form new stars. The red dots seen along these filaments are embedded protostars, only barely seen, the longest and most transparent infrared wavelengths. Once the stars are fully formed and glowing from the heat of nuclear fusion, they illuminate, warm, and disrupt the surrounding dust, creating these dramatic structures. The stars eventually drift beyond their birthplaces, mixing among their older cousins. This diffuse blue glow shows us the overall distribution of stars throughout the galaxy. Eventually, the most massive stars die in supernova explosions. We can see their expanding shock waves, rich in newly forged heavy elements, that will help form the next generation of dust and stars. The Glimpse MIPSCAL survey is truly a pictorial guide to the past, present, and future of stars in our home galaxy. Astronomers will study the data for many years to come, and the observations will be a roadmap to guide future infrared observatories. If you'd like to explore Spitzer's Milky Way, all two and a half billion pixels are available on our website. You can download the whole thing in segments, or use one of several web viewers that let you pan and zoom through the image interactively. Take a look, you might find something that no one else has seen. For the Spitzer Science Center, I'm Dr. Robert Hurd, reminding you there's a hidden universe just waiting for you to explore. It's a chaotic region, sculpted by the glare of one generation of massive stars that's giving rise to the next. At first glance, 
you might not think that this fifth anniversary image from NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope would actually tell us anything about our own Sun or Earth. But astronomers see this region known as W5 differently. Its strangely chaotic dust structures are like a work of art. But to astronomers, W5 is more than just a picture. It's a graphic novel telling a story of how one generation of stars is helping the next to be born. The scientists who've been translating this novel for us are Dr. Lori Allen and her graduate researcher Xavier Koenig, both at the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics. Well, most stars probably form in regions like W5, that is, massive star-forming regions in which hundreds or maybe even thousands of stars form at the same time. The W5 region is about 300 light years across, and that's about 100 times larger than the distance to the nearest star. While it's filled with thousands of average sized stars, it's the dozen or so stellar giants that are really calling the shots. Compared to our own G type Sun, these enormous O stars have about 30 times as much mass. Moreover, they're about 10,000 times as luminous, and most of that light is in the ultraviolet. Yes, we are talking instant sunburn. So the radiation that these O stars put out, um, vast amounts of ultraviolet radiation, has a very destructive effect. It, it breaks up molecules and it destroys dust grains. Uh, and the stellar winds, these very violent, energetic stellar winds, sweep up material around that causes these, creates these large bubble structures that we see, these very large cavities around them. However, denser areas take longer to clear, lingering as the material around them is swept away by the radiation and stellar winds. This sculpts distinctive pillars that, like accusing fingers, point out the stars that created them. The effect of this, in fact, we find is also can be a constructive effect that the material gets swept up and gathers up enough material that it can collapse into successive generations of stars. We're pretty sure that dense clumps of gas uh, are likely to collapse under their own gravity, and that's how we think uh, stars form. But if you give them a little push, like the O stars can, with the, with the energy that they're putting out and the expansion of the, these bubbles, the, the stellar winds they're blowing past, this can help the, the work that gravity is doing in collapsing these clumps down and actually help to either speed up or, or ex enhance the, the star formation process. We can see some of these baby stars inside the dense tips of many of the pillars. In W5, we think we can trace two or three generations of star formation, starting near the center of the big cavity, uh, where there is an O star, at w which probably represents the first generation of star formation, and then working outward to young stars that are found inside this big cavity and then further out to stars that are just now forming in the molecular gas on the rim of the bubble. This kind of study would not be possible in visible light. Only infrared images can pierce the veil of dust to show the interesting bits. Well, what's great about Spitzer is that it's looking directly at the wavelengths where young stars emit a lot of their light. So the easiest thing we can do is just go and look for the reddest objects in the image, which are picked out excellently by this, in this image by their bright red color, uh, relative to the more blue ones, which we think are slightly older. They've lost all their material that was around them when they formed. Some of those young stars appear to be shedding their surrounding material before our very eyes. At 24 microns, seen in red, a number of smaller stars have dust tails pointing away from the nearby O stars. These dust tails indicate ongoing destruction of protoplanetary disks by stellar winds. Indeed, stars unfortunate enough to form too close to an O star could well be stripped bare before having any time to form planets at all. W5 shows us how interconnected things can be in our own galaxy. Stars are born, reshape the nebula around them, and give rise to the next generation of stars. Perhaps five billion years ago, some long-gone O star swept up the material that formed our own sun. And if it had been a little too close, perhaps our own Earth would have never formed 
and we would have never evolved here to look up and wonder why. For the Spitzer Science Center, I'm Dr. Robert Hurd, reminding you there's a hidden universe just waiting to be discovered. The Omega Nebula, or M17, is a star-forming region in the constellation of Sagittarius and is about 6,000 light-years away. It gets its name from a dust cloud that, in visible light, looks like the Greek letter Omega. In infrared light, that dust fades into transparency, and the nebula more resembles the Roman letter V. A cluster of huge stars lies at the heart of the nebula. Some of them are over 40 times as massive and 100,000 times as bright as our sun. Such stars produce strong winds of charged gas particles that flow outward and sculpt the shape of the nebula. Nearby, less massive stars are surrounded by curved bow shocks. These glowing shells form where the weaker winds from the smaller stars slam into the stronger winds from the distant cluster. The bow shocks act like weather vanes, showing astronomers which direction the interstellar winds are blowing. <laughs> 